All right, Blake Cousins here, and I've got an incredible guest for you today. He goes by the name of Brian Forster. You may have seen him on his YouTube channel. He has about 125,000 subscribers, and he runs a tour company over there in Peru called The Hidden Inca Tours. And we're gonna be supplying the link to his incredible YouTube channel and his website. But Brian Forrester explores ancient lost worlds and a hidden history on location videos made by the adventure exploring Peru, Bolivia, Egypt, even Hawaii, Easter Island, and other exotic places. With a special emphasis on evidence that's advanced technology and human history are at least 10,000 years old. Well, we've got video and it's going to be quite exciting. Brian has agreed to do a four part series right here at Third Phase Moon where we go all over the planet and check out these ancient structures could they be made by aliens that's the big question isn't it all right well let's uh let's get right to it so i want to go over this new video that you just put out from peru and this uh face in the mountain got me right away can you tell me exactly the location what does this face represent was it carved out of the mountain well, it's located at a, a location called Oyente Tambo, which is at the northern end of the Sacred Valley, pretty close to Cusco, which was the Inca capital. And uh, it's a, the profile of the face is approximately 500 feet tall and more than 500 feet above the valley floor. Now, most people would think that it's just a natural phenomenon, but the first time I saw it, being a sculptor, I noticed that there's no vegetation growing on it. So I believe that it's an artificial construction and uh, the only uh, plant growth that's on it is where the beard is. And what it represents is an ancient teacher called Viracocha that supposedly came from a distant land to teach the local people. Well, so the locals over there believe that this is some kind of, uh, not artificial, but actually man-made for a purpose exactly all right so as we go through the uh ancient city here we come along this little water fountain you describe it as to have to be almost impossible to create this even today it almost has to be a perfect geometry explain what this water feature represents well, the interesting thing is that the Inca discovered megalithic ruins, such as at Oyente Tambo, and one of the examples is that fountain. It probably wasn't originally a fountain, but the Inca carved a slot in the top of it in order to be able to let water flow. And the fact is, when it's properly maintained, the water travels perfectly through it and lands in the center of the bowl below. And that takes a lot of engineering in terms of hydraulics because the channel has to be the exact proper width and depth and also the angle of the channel has to be perfect in order to achieve this. The, the fascinating thing that I wasn't allowed to show is if you run your finger across the front of it, you can actually make the water itself stick to the stone and then when you flick it again, then it pops back out. It's a bit of an engineering marvel. Well, so the theory basically here is that the Incas discovered this advanced technology, uh, ancient civilization, and then built itself around it. The Incas were there after the fact of something that was there before, long ago. Definitely, at uh, many different locations, at Oyente Tambo, the city of Cusco, Machu Picchu, and other locations that were used by the Inca as ceremonial sites, it's obvious that there were megalithic works there prior to their existence. And each one of those megalithic works is also heavily damaged, not by people uh, striking rocks against them, but something catastrophic happened in that location, wiping out the ancient civilization that had lost ancient high technology. Wow, fascinating. Now, this is incredible. Again, advanced technology, engineering at its best. This throne, this seat, uh, these two seats carved right out of the rock and you rub your fingers against it. It seems like you see no evidence of any kind of chiseling or any kind of uh, modern day tool work on here. How was this made? What's your thoughts on this uh, process of how this is possible? 
Well, another interesting thing is that there are no sharp corners. So every every corner uh, appears like it was made using a router of some kind, but we see no tool marks. And that's what's very intriguing. When you look at ancient Egypt, we can see the use of ancient high technology in terms of power tools. But in Peru, there don't seem to be any tool marks whatsoever. So we're looking at the possibility of this ancient advanced culture being able to manipulate the matter itself, possibly turning hard stone into almost like a toffee material temporarily, shaping it and then letting it reset as hard stone again. Via maybe a sound wave or some kind of a laser type carving tool, what, what would you think? Yeah, it's more likely that it was sound, not not light. So um, some kind of the ability to be able to strike a certain frequency and manipulate the matter itself, shape it, and then turn that frequency back off and let the, the stone solidif- or re-solidify. Well, almost like turning a rock into putty and then letting it uh, dry up again into its uh, form after once it's molded. This is uh, amazing because you see in, again, more video that you've taken and it's a, quite incredible. You capture this in 4K. Everybody, you got to take a look at Brian Forrester's YouTube channel. But I see you take out the level on your iPhone or some kind of app and this thing levels up perfectly. This is even hard to even do in uh, modern day buildings. Yeah, that's what's quite amazing. And these surfaces are several thousand years old. Yet when you put a, and of course there's lots of earthquake activity that happens in that part of Peru. But um, any place that you find this megalithic work in the bedrock itself, you find that the surfaces are easily within one degree of being perfectly level, which is an astonishing achievement. It's uh, quite incredible. And there's so many uh, of these advanced lost worlds that you have been discovering so it's going to be our pleasure right here at third phase moon to have you back for more incredible adventures from around the world brian forrester thanks for joining us right here at third phase moon look forward to hearing you from you real soon always a pleasure blake thank you all right brian uh everybody if you see anything incredible and you captured it on camera we'd like to see it right here at third phase moon Submit it to us right here. Blake Cousins, keep your eyes on the skies. We're not alone. demand paul barrett is back with his third album third phase of moon the strangest things twelve brand new tracks heard by millions on your favorite channel third phase of moon Available on iTunes, Amazon, and music streaming services. Phase of Moon, The Strangest Things. Available right now. Links are below. <laughs> 